Welcome to another podcast of the current situation of Manchester United. Happy New Year to each and every one of you guys that are in the hearing of my voice. Manchester United fans, Chelsea fans, Spurs fans, Burton fans, Arsenal fans, City fans, Liverpool fans. Even Liverpool fans, I'm going to give a New Year's congratulations. But yeah, um, not to get lengthy, I don't want to I wasn't even expecting to do a video. But to keep up with some promises that I made some weeks ago, I basically said that in every season that Manchester United does, I'm going to basically give a half a season evaluation on how they, they did from January to December. And then I'll be doing another evaluation part two in either May or June, yeah, which would be from January to May. But this video, I'm going to be talking about Manchester United's how they're performing, how they improved, um, how they have improved, um, what was the tweaking, what was the thing that improved their game as a whole. Again, this video ain't going to be long, so I have to, I'm going to be try. I'm going to try to be very quick. But yeah, man, 2022 is um is in the eighth ball right now. That's a few persons in uh in the in the previous year. Most of them I watched on YouTube. I'll say one, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> um that's a few more man that I watched on a regular or semi regular basis only to find out that they passed away. If I was to say another one, um this guy named Jared Ward He's a C he well he was because he's passed away now. He was a CEO of BioS3 training on YouTube. I think I believe his his his, his YouTube channel is still on YouTube. So if you're into fitness, go look him up. He has some good videos that can help you out. If you're losing weight, gaining weight, he can help you if you're looking for stay so they will look into it. But yeah, man of uh I mean Pele is possible. Pele did. see he, 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 here's the thing. Here, here, here's the simple thing. And I wanted to do a video on this when I think he passed away. Wednesday or Thursday, Pele passed away. No, Thursday. I said this the, the that actual morning on Thursday he actually passed. I said on the morning of the day. I said this because I knew that Pele was not going to make it any longer. But I said this that morning. I said to myself, say, like I was talking to God, I was saying, say, God, I'm just a mortal being, but look. Let Pele, let Pele see the new year. You know, after the new year, I can bring him to Fountains Blue or something, but let him actually see the new years. Because Pele's health, as, as stated in the media, that his health was worsening and he's losing every grip of the battle with cancer so he wasn't going to make it any longer but basically so let him actually come out of the year alive only to see the new year and then you know god can can take him away or something but that fall enough then when he passed away that was very shocking because i basically said that the morning and i didn't even know he was going to pass that same day so that was very you know very shocking but anyway i don't want this video to have a negative cloud over like i'm just trying to give um, some commencements to the person that are in bereavement, to the person that passed away. This is not the video for it. Manchester United got three points against Wolves. Didn't watch the game, but um, we're now in the top four spot. So that's obviously an improvement. Um, going into the evaluation of this season from August to December, With the, the appointment of Eric Ten Hag, a lot of persons, of course, came with skepticism. Some persons were saying the, 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 the Dutch league is not as competitive as the Premier League, so it makes no sense to go appoint a youth from the Dutch league that could, you know, mess up himself in the Premier League because he's not used to that type of football. My man is used to Champions League football. Champions League football proceeds and presides over Premier League football any day. This brethren in 2019 brought Ajax to the semi-finals. If that's not a if that's not an accomplishment, I don't know what is. 
and it's not like that side was riddled with star struck players. He had a system that embellished them to go to the semis. They went to the finals at Euro League in 2017. And it was a young squad. Young squad, I think the average age was uh, 25 or 24 or so. So it wasn't an Inter Milan side of 2010. It wasn't a, a, a seasoned ripe side. But yeah, man, person was skeptical. So anyway, when he came in, we lost two games in Premier League. Person started to, and see, this thing, th things like this really test out fans, you know. A uh, Manchester United uh, new manager just coming to the fold, lost his first game, lost his second game. Persons are now biting them lips and saying that this bridging is not cut out to be Manchester United manager. Persons are really low on patience. This is the modern age we live in right now. I basically said this in our previous video. We have some United fans, whether they're post millennials or millennials or old star, old heads. They have a microwave mentality, like they expect the manager to just come in and changes happen like that. We have been making gradual changes. Golkato Arteta is with Arsenal now. After three years, he's had, he has Arsenal bouncing ball. Arsenal is top of the tree in the Premier League right now. Who would have thought that? Liverpool is in six. Wait, whoa. Liverpool is in fifth. Not fifth place or so. Or sixth place. Um, City dropped points yesterday against Everton. Everton, uh, not ev well, yeah, yeah. Everton go drop points. Well, Everton has been struggling. Newcastle has been bouncing ball this season as well. So we have to give everything a time to adjust. And ever since August, leading up till September, he has given Manchester United a breath of fresh air. We have seen improvements. Even real Charles can see that. So it's not that the change is, is just, you know, it's, we have to like get a magnifying glass and look through the, through the side and see improvements. No, we're seeing improvements. The improvements is there. Rashford is knocking goals. Although he's missed some chances this season, he's since scoring goals. Martial is going to be a, a, a hit. He's going, a fully fit Martial is going to be very suitable for this season. And I, I've said this in August. When we had Sir Cristiano Ronaldo, I said this brethren is not suitable as our striker in the system. The way how every time I want to play, he's not suited for that system. He cannot play with his back to go. He's, he's the type of striker that he's, he has to be, his feet has to be planted in the box. Across the ball, the ball in the box, give him the ball in the box and he scored. But he hasn't done that, he's been given chances. But it just shows that he's not that same player. So he had to be let loose. I'm also, 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 the fact that he did a, a crafty interview with Pierce Morgan. And of course, Man a, a club of Manchester United standing couldn't pacify that and allow it to just happen. And with, I know con consequences hasn't been brought out so he's gone now he's gone to to saudi arabia or something last uh thursday or friday yeah friday the man's getting money man not doing wrong get your money but back to manchester united we have making improvements dude all the way lost against brighton all the way lost against um who else with a born uh not bournemouth is another b-side brett brent uh Breston, uh, Brentford or Breston, one out of the two. Ever since, we have been improving. We won against Liverpool at home. We won against, uh, who else we won against? I mean, we lost against City. That was a trashing game. But still, we have improved. Even in the loss against City, we didn't just sit back and say, all right, boom, I saw it set. The game is already done for. We actually win for it. That's why we can't see the goals. We, score. we can't see it. We didn't just sit back. We scored goals. Anthony got a goal. One whip into the top corner. Boof. Who else get a goal? I think, yeah, Marcel got a goal. Marcel got two goals. My man come on and get two goals. So it wasn't just dead like that. And I, and I say that when in the, in the match reaction. This side is different, man. We can feed the energy. We have a manager that wants and demands better from not only players, but from the hierarchy of the club. 
Glazers are looking to sell the club. So we're in a good spot. Things are looking good for Manchester United. Right now, as I've stated, most of you guys should know is by now. We need a striker. Hold a thought. Today is uh, the 1st of January. I know most of you guys are not familiar with this, but I'm going to say right now that three years ago, I started this YouTube channel on the 9th of January 2020. Not because I was bored because of COVID. COVID didn't even take place in January of 2020. I think started in October, but it wasn't as apparent as starting with March of 2020, leading up until in 2021. But I started that channel because we, Manchester, I heard, well, I'm basically going to talk about it on the 9th, which will be next week, Monday. But basically, to give a, a gist of what I, why I, I, I started it, we needed a striker, Rashford. You know, he was going getting his goals, but he was getting injured. Rashford was get uh, Marcel was getting injured as well. Greenwood, we couldn't re own rely on Greenwood. Greenwood was just making his, Greenwood was just making his bones that season, isn't it? So we couldn't just rely on this 18-year-old from the academy. So we needed a striker to bring in January, at least as a loan from now on to the end of the season. This may be the deja vu of three years back. We need a striker. The January transfer window is open as of today. So we need a striker. Whether it's from now until May. Or we just need a striker that's young, that's fresh, that's ambitious, that's hungry, that's healthy, enthusiastic, looking to get goals. We have been linked with strikers. Guapo gone to Liverpool. So we don't we we, we can't be getting uh we can't be looking for, for Guapo now. We are, look, we are linked to Marat. I don't want Marat to know him near Manchester United. This bridging is like a prostitute on a pavement. He's going to club, to club, to club. So, and plus, he's not the best in front of goal. His composure is questionable. So, we don't need this youth at Manchester United. Who else will uh, who else willing to? I can't remember the names, man. I don't have a list of, of names, man. But we are linked to some certain strikers. We are linked to Joe Felix. We're also linked to who else we linked to? A decent amount of names. But we definitely need a striker. Rashford and Marcel can't cut the cake alone. Sancho is a forward, yes, but he's not a, a focal point out and out striker. Anthony ain't an out and out striker. This bridge is not even the best shooter. We have um, who else we have? We we we, we have uh Ilan I mean Ilango. Ilango will do his bits, but this Bridget is not a starting striker for Manchester United. I mean, come on, man. We're not going to just drop our levels down here so in, in, the, in, the, in the toilet bin, man. So we need a certified striker to lead the front. Rashford is doing that at the moment. Rashford is getting his goals. And yes, that leads to the, 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 the discussion of from January... Not January, from August to December. We've been winning games. Again, I'm not going to go through any game, every game, every game. But we've improved. We've signed Casemiro. We needed a player like that in our midfield. We lost Matic. We lost Lingard. We lost uh, Mata. We lost Andres Pereira for good. We lost Garner. I think Garner went to Everton. We lost, uh, we lost a few other play midfield players, man. So that meet we lost Pogba. I forgot Pogba. Oh, you can forget Pogba. So we lost Pogba in June. And because we lost that amount of players from the midfield department, we needed a midfield overhaul in the in in, in, in the in the transfer work market. I can't even talk. It's my my fuck it's early on my end. Ten eighteen AM. We needed a midfield overhaul in the in the summer. And that started with the signing of Casemiro. We've been linked with Frankie De Jong, but Frankie De Jong, Frankie De Jong was trying to play us, man. My man was trying to tease us, like how with the carrot on the stick. Oh, Manchester United don't want me that bad. Man. We, we're not going to fall for that. Plus, Barcelona didn't really want to let him go anyway. Although he was on peas as his, as his paper week. So they, he wasn't going to just let him go like that. So we had to be linked with other midfield players. And I said this, bro, Pogba, always I start with Ericsson and Casimir, but Pogba is a one number, and my man is not a diamond dozen, which means that 
if you go sign one midfield to replace Pogba, that's not enough. Pogba has a high degree of quality for three play three quality midfielders to replace him. One alone. Three equal one. And we started that with uh, Casemiro. I think Casemiro came after Ericsson or Ericsson or Casemiro. Anyway, but we'll have these two quality midfielders. That's a start. I believe I believe we need one more midfielder as quality. Is me. But yeah, we haven't been playing Ronaldo much. That's because he's not adjustable and adaptable to the suit of style of play that Manchester United through every time he wants to display on the pitch. And that has been shown throughout this season up until December. Well, up until the World Cup started. And after the World Cup started, we got uh, we won two games. We won against... We won against... We won against... Um, uh, not Everton. We won against Wolves yesterday. 1-0 victory. Rashford came on and get a goal. It wasn't the best of performance, although I didn't watch it. But we don't have to play flashy, f fancy, flash, flashy football away from home to get three points, man. With how the Premier League is going right now, we can actually get tops, uh, top three plays. We cannot do Newcastle only or so if we continue our form. Newcastle is not going to ease down. They have money and they have ambition. So they're not going to ease down because they get three or third place or they're looking to get top four places this season. Remember how Man City came to power in 2008, leading up until 2012 and definitely up until just like right now. That's how Newcastle may come in the Premier League. Yeah. So maybe it's not moral not the best way it's a cheating code but that's just the reality of the premier league right now if a person that has a lot of money is a billionaire want to sign up buy a club and buy you know top notch players to lead a club out of you know the top 18 or whatever top 15 to a top four club it's going to happen along with the statics the tactics of the manager so I'll say this, man. I think Manchester United actually has a game. Hold on there. We have a game uh, when? We have a game in two days time against uh, Bournemouth on Tuesday at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I might do a, uh, I might, yeah, I might do a preview. Man, I don't even know if I'm going to do a preview. I can't make any promises, guys. I can't make any promises. But with regards to whether I preview or not, we should be winning this game. There's no reason why we shouldn't win this game. But going back to the evaluation of Man United season from August to December, although I've not been nit nit nitpicky with a specific fixture, but I'm saying this to to not make this video lengthy, that we have improved gradually. Yes, we lost our first two games in Premier League. We haven't had the best start in the Euro League. I think we lost against uh, Real Sociedad in our first game at home, over some crafty penalty. But we have picked up the pace ever since. That didn't keep us down. And I even said this, man. Even when we lost against Real Sociedad, Man United was playing ball. We were fo playing football. So it's not like we 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 lost and we played trash. We, we played very well. And I said this in a video back in September. That we shouldn't allow this loss to get the best of us or belittle us. And it shouldn't. Because we are seeing the gradual improvement from defense to midfield to the attack. From the defensive third to the midfield third to the attacking third. So everything has improved all over the pitch. Maguire is not getting much games. And rightly so. Maguire is bench now. He's a bench player. Varane and Martinez is benching his youth. So they are the starting uh, pair for Manchester United. Luke Shaw is getting his games now. It looks like he's trimming down his weight and he's improving his form. Oh crap. We have a game in against City on the, on the 14th of January. Jesus, please. Man, I can't even take this, man. It's too early for that, man. But, you know, it is what it is, but... Yeah, man, we haven't been making improvements, man. 
they have been making improvements. One against Tottenham, we have done well against the top clubs. I believe we won against Arsenal. I can't even remember. Did we win against Arsenal? No. It was a draw, wasn't it? No, we lost against Arsenal this season when Ronaldo scored that goal and he dedicated to his long lost, uh, his newborn that died. It's me. But we lost that game, but I'm pretty sure it's still decent. So we're still improving. We're still improving. And we're going to get better. And I believe we're going to couple some, uh, we're going to get a couple of our trophies at the end of the season. We're in the quarterfinals of the 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 the, the, the F- EFL. We're going to be playing against. We're going to be playing against Charlton, Athletic or whatever. Charlton, that's that's supposed to be a win. Yeah, man. So we have a suitable system. We have a balanced midfield with Ericsson. My my phone is going off. Ericsson and Casemiro. Fred is on the bench. McTominay is on the bench. We don't have this McFred midfield no more. That's taken care of. In relation to goals, we need more goals, yo. We need more goals, yes. And that goes back to why we're adding to striker because we need another striker. Man, I've been running my mouth for a long time. I'll leave your comments on me in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you disagree with what I'm saying, man, leave your comments down below. We'll toss it out in the comment section. Um, before I finish this video, trust the cliche, but trust the process. Klopp got Liverpool to 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 play ball at the start of four of twenty. Basically, basically, yeah, Liverpool started to play ball properly in fall of twenty seventeen. And ever since they've been playing very well. Isn't it me? Now I'll say this about Liverpool and I don't care much about Liverpool, but I'll say this to state a point in terms of Manchester United's improvement. Liverpool has been wishy washy this season. They have not been the same Liverpool as three years ago or four years ago. So they're in a transition moment right now. They have lost one of their most prolific forwards for the last four years inside your money. They need a striker. Firmino is washed up. So that Bridging can't hold the front no more for Liverpool. And plus, Falls 9 is not playing by Liverpool no more. He's a striker. No need to say no Falls 9, so he's a striker. The midfield of Liverpool has seems like it's slightly changed up a bit, although that's not my business. What I'm saying is that they have made they are making adjustments. They are transitioning. Arsenal is improving, although they're on top of the league. And it took at least three years for Arteta to get the ball rolling like that. So it's going to take time for Arteta to get the ball rolling like that. Not saying that it's going to take three years, because he's, of course, more experienced than Arteta. But I'm saying, well, that, that experience means matter. Because he, even if you're a youngster, manager, you can actually get your side playing ball quicker than other experienced managers that are new to a club. So that's not really about much of a difference. What I'm saying is that just because Arteta took three years with Arsenal doesn't mean everything is going to take three years. Plus, with the patience of Man United fans, man, we know how we be, man. We can't be waiting no freaking three years for improvements. Cause we go get out, we we are we are going to, we are going to uh, get hot, vex about that. So everything hog knows the pressure that comes on his shoulder in managing Manchester United. It's not easy managing Manchester United. That's why we have like what five field managers, Moyes, Van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, uh, 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 um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ralph Ragnick wasn't much of a, a, a failure because he did tweak a few stuff and he basically, you know, put Manchester United under the bus in the press and rightly so because we needed that, that, back, that kick back in the ass. We needed that. So we had four field managers. So Eric Ten Hag should not be the fifth. Is me? He should not be the fifth. He's going to improve. I know he will improve. With that being said, I'm going to finish the video right there because I could go on. on. But we're seeing the improvements. Let us trust the process. It's cliche to say yes, but let's trust the process, man. We can't be just sucking managers just like that, left and right. 
And just because everything doesn't uh, doesn't feel well, Cristiano Ronaldo is gone now. Some fans in like oh, we treated Cristiano Ronaldo as if this virgin is 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 the same Cristiano Ronaldo of twenty twelve or of 20, 2010. He's not the same. He's nowhere near the same player of 2010 or 2012. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. That's why he was benched. So when he basically said that he had the highest respect for Sierra 7, after they got lo- after they lost against Man City and he didn't come on, he knew that if he put Sierra 7 on a pitch, he would probably have the most disastrous performance of his footballing career. And he didn't want to risk that because he knew that would probably taper down his legacy. He didn't want that to happen. So he so save face. My man go go please. Serious make him go stay on the bench. He didn't want him to come on. Comment some below man. Again, I could go on and on man. But I don't want to keep you guys up man. Like and subscribe to the channel and I'm appreciative of those that watch this video. Share the video, like and subscribe. I'm out.